Welcome back. Is our popularity killing us? On Valentine's Day of all days, a siesta key man died of a broken heart, a heart attack. According to his girlfriend, it took EMS 15 minutes to respond, an ambulance winding its way through traffic and bridge construction. And the question is, are siesta keys, crowded streets, traffic and construction putting lives at risk? Joining us for more is Jean Kesakoski, the president of the Siesta Key Association, and our ABC7 reporter, Dwayne Lindo. Uh, Jean, thank you so much for, uh, for talking to us. And I know you have been in constant, com constant communication with county commissioners uh, yeah. about this. You talked to Al Mayo today. What did they say? Uh, we did. Well, we didn't talk specifically about traffic. We were there for another topic. But uh, I did uh, talk with him about the fact that he couldn't be here tonight. He otherwise would have been, but he has a previous engagement that prevented him from coming. But it's, a, it's been a conversation with us and the commissioners and the sheriff and the fire department for quite a while now. Uh, probably the last three or four years especially, it's become uh, particularly intense at certain times of the year. Now, we asked and invited EMS to join us tonight and also the, the sheriff's office. They both declined. Dwayne, I would imagine that you know, EMS and the sheriff's department obviously did not create this, uh, the, the problem. They're, they're the, the, the folks who are having to deal with it. Right, you know, and they're they're trying to make the necessary steps to try to alleviate the problem of traffic, as mentioned in the piece. Uh, they realize, especially during season, that you have uh, a, quite a bit of folks that come here. You mentioned in your intro that uh, this is a place of paradise, so you're going to have quite a few people here during the season. So they've taken the ne necessary steps to try to alleviate or try to get from point A to point B in a safe and efficient manner. Gene, could you describe how dramatically different is traffic and getting around Siesta Key is different in season than it is, let's say, in July or August? Uh, well, we're not here in July and August. We, we well, there you go. <laughs> the, but uh, I'll tell you what we do like to do is come down in the fall. Uh, it's a great season in Florida. Maybe I shouldn't say that because we try to keep that secret. But the traffic is not bad there. Uh, so it, it kind of goes back to maybe mm, seven, eight years ago when you could get around. Traffic was a little sticky at certain times, but mostly it was pretty manageable. Uh, it seems like since then it's been growing year after year after year. Uh, we bought in about 2011. Uh, 2011 and 12, we actually went back to New Hampshire during March because gridlock was on the island. Uh, but it was just that month. Now it's sort of stretched out more. Uh, President's Day, for example, was crushing traffic. So uh, I think there's more, m more baby boomers are coming in. They're living on the mainland. They want to get to the beach. There's more traffic just all the time now coming back and forth uh, across those bridges. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that in our next segment. We are just getting warmed up. We'll have much more on EMS and tra traffic concerns right after we check the first alert weather. So stay with us. Welcome back. Is heavy traffic and construction causing dangerous situations on Siesta Key? And joining us for more is Gene Kusakowski, the president of the Siesta Key Association, and ABC7 reporter Dwayne Lindo. Um, Gene, when you heard Dwayne's story here, um, have you seen yourself emergency vehicles having great difficulty getting to where they're, where, where they're going and getting off the island to, to bring somebody to the hospital? Uh, they do. Uh, on the island, it's not so bad. In the very heavy condo strip where I live, there's a center island. And it was actually, uh, there was a controversy about that because they put some crosswalks in, which are a big help. But they wanted to put raised pedestrian islands there. And you know, the fire people said, no, 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 we won't be able to go where we need to go if you put the raised islands in. So that's not so bad. The big, big problem is the bridges, especially the North Bridge. It's one lane, and people really have a hard time getting out of the way. Uh, on the South Bridge, it's two lanes, and there are some crossovers. And I've seen when emergency vehicles try to come in, people will actually take the crossover and try and go back the other way just to get out of the way. And, and Dwayne, this problem with the bridges, that's what apparently delayed the ambulance getting to and from this location? Well, uh, it, it didn't per se, but what the, uh, what the uh, emergency personnel, usually what they do is they keep in constant communication with the tenders of those bridges on North Bridge and South Bridge. So if they do have a call, if Station 11, which is on the mainland, has a call, if uh, 13 is busy, which is on Siesta Key, and Station 11 has to come on the island to uh, come to a call, basically they get in contact with the tender, uh, have them uh, put that bridge down if it's up. How long does that take? 
Um, it it possibly can take up to a minute, but the point the point is they try to do that beforehand. They try to communicate with the tender and let them know they're coming down beforehand and hopefully the bridge is down once they get to the bridge. And again, hopefully traffic is not to, uh, you know, congested, I guess, when they get to, to the head of that bridge. Gene, have you had conversations with, with the county, different departments in terms of what can be done possibly to alleviate this problem? Well, we have, but uh, as I had mentioned to you earlier, the roads involved here are largely state roads. So it's really an FTOT discussion. The county has a limited number of things they can do, but they, they're users of the FTOT roads. So it's really a, a, a complicated conversation that you have to have among several different uh, groups. So here is the loaded question. <laughs> you know what it is. Uh, I mean, is this just very poor urban planning, or is this just the price of being popular? It, it's both, I think. Well, no. Let me, let me do that more diplomatically. Just remember, just uh, Visit Sarasota is listening. <laughs> I, I love your Visit Sarasota. <laughs> uh, it, it thing, Siesta Key evolved over a number of years, and I've seen this. It's not only a Siesta Key problem, it's happening everywhere. Things get built, things get done, they all seem like it's a fine little thing. And then eventually you get up one day and you look at, look around and say, what happened? You know, and, and at that point you really have to take a break, step back and say, okay, here's where we are. It doesn't matter how we got here, but here's where we are. How do we start to unwind this situation to get back to a uh, more manageable state? And are there any easy answers out there? There are no easy answers. It's a tough problem. Uh, we were talking uh, about getting cars off the road. One of the things people are talking about is about bike sharing. I'm a biker. I love bikes. The bike infrastructure in, the, in certain stretches of Siesta Key is not very good. So one of the things people are looking at is how do we get funds to go after some of these tough problems? They're not easy. Uh, you have to reclaim some condo property, perhaps, widen the right of way back to where it maybe should be. Uh, they aren't easy steps, but I think it's time to start having those conversations. And, and Dwayne, this is, this is not a problem that, you know, obviously is just particular to Siesta Key. We, we see this every single day in downtown Sarasota. That's why people around here are so um, energized on the issue of, of development down here. And it's not just in Sarasota. If you're from the Northeast, right. getting through New York City, or uh, you're from New England, and you, you talk, we're talking about Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket, yep. um, seasonal tra traffic has had this kind of ramification. Yeah, you know, uh, and you just hit the nail on the head. It's development. You know, you have a development, and it's just a matter of trying to keep up in terms of uh, uh, putting together roads and uh, the necessary uh, 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 ways to. Um, to get everything developed to accommodate for the amount of development that's that's uh, coming up and the amount of uh, folks that are moving to this area uh, to live and the amount of tourists coming here to uh, to visit this great place. And just to add on to what Gene was saying too in terms of trying to alleviate some of the traffic on Siesta Key, I mean, you have these trolleys that are out there, Uber, Lyft, uh, that alleviates the traffic a little bit, but I mean, every little thing helps at this point. Gene, I, you know, one of the questions I would have asked the county if uh, one of the commissioners or EMS or uh, the sheriff's office would be if you if you say that a lot of these roads are really state roads and the state's responsibility what is the county doing to try to get money from the state to do whatever is is possible to make some of the improvements that, that you're talking about well it, it's it doesn't really work like that it's a state uh, a, a state responsibility so it's right. not the county getting money it's no, the state from the state to, right yeah, right but so I mean, are they the, are they in conversation they are, with they the are in conversation uh, commissioner mayo told me today that he's in communication with lk nandam the uh, the head of uh, fdot and again it's not an easy problem they, they are working on things they've done some minor improvements that stickney point road intersection was really really bad and they fixed that quite well uh, so they're working on it but it, it doesn't happen overnight you are the new president of the siesta key association how much does this come up in conversation and, and what are local residents saying to you about you know their enjoyment of the area considering how congested it's getting mm -hmm. they are concerned uh, we have had a few dozen comments of people specifically health related because we're all getting older as much as we hate to admit it. Uh, they are concerned about can I get to my doctor if I need to get to my doctor? Can an EMS get to me? 
we've had discussions about should we have uh, better contact with uh, helicopter services and, and uh, put those on scramble if there is a call just in case the uh, regular people can't get through. Dwayne, where did you leave things uh, with that, that poor woman, Leslie, who lost her boyfriend there? I mean, is this just a, a, a tragic thing that happened in her life or is she seeking any kind of redress? Well, look, she's just trying to, at this point, this just happened last month, obviously, early last month, Valentine's Day. She's still trying to get over the loss of her boyfriend. Uh, her son was right there helping her out, calling 911. Uh, at this point, she's try taking it day by day. Um, this may be something, and this is what she said, this may be something that she uh, you know, possibly looks into, possibly trying to find the, the 911 call and see if there, there's any way we can correct uh, a lot of the problems that we're having with traffic. So she may be a part of kind of trying to seek a solution in, um, in a lot of the issues they're having on Siesta Key with traffic okay. sometime in the future. Let's take a quick break and we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. Stay with us. And our guests join us right now for final thoughts. So Gene, I mean, what would you tell your friends and neighbors around here after seeing this story and, and you know, we, we, we can't say this man passed away because of the time it took EMS to get there and get him to the hospital, but it, it is at least a, a word of warning. Well, it's indicative of a problem, and I think, uh, as I was saying earlier, we need to take a step back, look at where we are, doesn't matter how we got here, look at where we are, and start thinking about some out-of-the-box solutions to alleviate the, the traffic problem. Uh, it's not an easy solution. I think it needs some serious brainstorming from the residents, from the state, from the county, and to get together and have a dialogue about what can we do uh, to try and get this back to a more workable state. And, and I, you know, the M EMS uh, chief said to you, it's almost a shell game that they're trying to pre-position emergency and first responders to handle the situation, but that's kind of, it seems almost like an ad hoc way to go about it. Well, I mean, I've spoken with the chief. The, he assured me they're doing their best in trying to, they realize the situation with fault. the traffic. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and just to, just to be clear, uh, Ms. Balamini, Leslie Balamini, she has no, she doesn't place any blame on uh, EMS officials and county officials because of this death. Anything could have happened. Um, it could have gone either way. They could have showed up 10 minutes earlier. It, it, who knows? Anything could have happened. So um, uh, with that being said, I think the chief uh, realizes that there's issues with traffic and they're trying to do the best they can to uh, correct those things. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on the one month anniversary of the Parkland shooting. Since the shooting, Florida's legislature passed its first gun control bill in 30 years. The age to buy a rifle has been raised from 18 to 21. A three-day waiting period was also implemented, as well as mental health provisions when buying a gun. The one thing some feel is missing is a ban on assault rifles. So we went to Facebook to hear your thoughts. And Billy says, good to see legislators listening to the will of the people instead of lobbyists. Catherine says, I want a ban on assault rifles, background checks for gun show sales and online sales, no possession of weapons until background check is approved, no time limitation and approval before delivery of gun. Mary Louise says, unless the rapid fire assault weapons such as the AR-15 used in the mass shootings are banned nationwide, the mass shootings may and probably will continue. It is imperative these be banned. Kate says, ban assault rifles and high capacity magazines. We're not living in the zombie apocalypse. No civilian needs those. If you'd like to join the conversation on the, tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And for the latest on local breaking news, don't forget to download the updated version of our app. If your current app doesn't work, it's expired, just go to the App Store and re-download it by searching for WWSB or My Suncoast. We want to thank both our guests for being here tonight. Gene Kosakowski, the president of the Siesta Key Association, and ABC7 reporter Dwayne Lindo. 